What's poppin' my soul squad? You tuning in to Saving One Soul at a Time podcast with your girl, your host, Black Angel. <laughs> What's up, my people? Man, I've been gone too long. And it's not been intentionally, y'all, but it's been necessary. Um, it's been, I, I've been, I felt like I was gonna crash, y'all. I was so unbalanced, y'all, and that's what today's topic's gonna be. It's gonna be about being unbalanced and how being unbalanced can really affect you in all different type of avenues so y'all i am so glad to be back i pray and hope y'all ain't gave up on your girl just know i never want to go that long without giving y'all footage um but life life happens you know and i just pray that when the time that life does happen to me i pray that y'all give y'all i pray that y'all have patience with me i pray that y'all don't give up on me and i pray that y'all are praying for me um because my goal is to make sure i'm on here making sure i'm testifying and opening up and being vulnerable and being able to give y'all uh my life trials to be able to help y'all in reference to getting through y'all so just know that i didn't i didn't want to leave for that long but i've been going through so so much and i just got to get y'all up to speed but first off, I just want to make sure that I start in prayer and just ask the Lord to order my tongue, you know, order my steps in this conversation that is given today. I pray nothing but uh, wisdom that's provided, knowledge. Heavenly Father, I pray nothing but encouragement, truth, Lord. You know, you stated that the truth will set us free. So, Lord, I pray for nothing but truth. And I just pray that uh, my my message is received um, with great intentions um, in no other way. So in Jesus' name, I give you all praises and glory. Amen. So y'all, let's just get dive right on in. The last time I left, I had did the Lupus Awareness Gala. And that went amazing. Um, it was my first gala. It was my first live speaking in front of people that I, I never met. None of those people, but just one person, which is the person who allowed me to do the event. Um, but it was an amazing, amazing outcome. I was able to touch and speak and pray over so many people that you know anytime that i'm being used by god it's an amazing feeling so after i left the after the gala was over um i was hit with helping one of my friends and um in the process of me helping one of my friends um throughout of what me and my fiance have already been going through um our relationships just start to turmoil um it was issue after issue situation after situation and you know it wasn't i couldn't understand what was the issues and what was going on but um once again i started helping someone and uh things just kind of started changing in my house um so outside of all that you know i just continued to pray continue to pray and just continue to keep going through that process with it after uh about three months my friend ended up leaving but during that time me and my fiance is just drowning. Um, and I think it's just more so of my heart. Y'all, one thing I've learned about where I've been as far as me being in this solitude for this last two months is that I'm a people pleaser. So I'm always trying to help somebody, always trying to save somebody, just always trying. I just lay myself out for way too many people. Um, and not to say that it's a bad thing, but in such a way it is a bad thing because God does not want us to be people pleasers. Yes, do he want us to make sure that we love our neighbor uh, overstood. But as far as pleasing people and doing things that still not being obedient to what his words say, that's not what he asked us to do. So basically, make a long story short, I found out that, that I was a people pleaser. And I went through a lot of issues and situations with that. But during all this time, Bubba First Memorial came up, which was May the 13th. Um, we had the first memorial. It went well. Um, I'm going to put out a lot of footage of from everything that I'm telling y'all. I'm going to put out all type of footage so y'all can play back everything I'm saying by the footage that that, that I'm presenting. Um, so Bubba had his first memorial. It was beautiful. Everybody, those that came out, I appreciate y'all. I love y'all for that. I know he do. Um, you know, that's something that will be every year. I'm praying that I get to see as many people face as I can um during this time but it was an amazing outcome well bubble memorial was on may the 13th um but basically i had to take another challenging loss 
um, by losing my uncle on May the 25th. And uh, the crazy part is, is that he came to Bubba's memorial and he was, you know, I wouldn't, I, I thought I felt something and I can tell something was wrong, but then I couldn't because he's, he's a fighter. So basically when he walked up to me, I was like, Unc, you made it. And he was like, yeah, I was going to make it, uh, rain, sleet, or snow or life or death. And, you know, we don't realize that the words that we say really is speaking into our presence. So when my uncle said that to me that day, he was really serious. Like he made it regardless, even though I didn't know what he was going through. He had already been enduring the pain, been going through all that for the last week and a half consistently. Yes, he had already kind of been knowing about his health issues. But just within that week before he even came to Bubba's Memorial, he was feeling bad. So he actually made that a priority to make sure that he was there. So that same night he stayed there. And the next day, he had to be rushed to the hospital because the pain had gotten so bad. Well, he went to the hospital. They did an emergency surgery on him. And then, come to find out, come, he had an enlarged liver. So, you know, once again, he's a fighter. We thinking everything was going to be okay. Well, God called him home on March the 20th, I mean, May the 25th. So I had to go go through that. He was my he was one of my favorite uncles. He was he was my one of my top favorite uncles. Um, I mean he's been in my life all my life. He's I mean he's been consistent in my life all my life. Not that none of my un other uncles have not been in my life, but he has been consistent in my life. So that took another hit on me. Um, but of course. You know, I had already not wanted to go back into depression that I just tried to, you know, keep on going, keep on going. Um, so, you know, we got through the funeral and everything. Um, but in the process of the funeral, my oldest brother gets sick, had to be in ICU for seven days. Y'all, I thought I was being stripped from everything. And I told God, I surrender. I had already told him that regardless of what it was, I surrender because there's nothing that I can do about all the things that I had had to endure in such a short time. But my brother, my oldest brother, the only brother that I have left, biological brother, had to be rushed to the IC, to the emergency room. When he get there, they put him in ICU. They start seeing how he had this on his brain and this on his brain. And I was just like, God, I know you didn't bring me this water fail. This can't be happening. I was in a place of distraught. You know, I couldn't understand anything. But. He was in there for seven days. They finally got him home. He went home. And as he went home, he was not in the best place, but he was home. So in the process of him being home, I ended up going on our girls trip. And y'all, Jamaica don't owe us nothing. It was amazing. It was like, whoever has put that image on Jamaica, please take that image back. Jamaica was beautiful. Like, it was amazing to be in a place of being around all your own culture and see how genuinely they love each other. See how genuinely they work with each other. See how genuinely they just been a back for each other. See, in America, we are a state of I. But when you go to different countries and you really start traveling the world and being able to see God's creation... They live in a community and society as we. And that's the only thing about America that I have I have really identified that I am I'm not I'm I'm not a, one of a kind of it. I do not like how we are I. We are selfish, we are spoiled, we think we work, don't get me wrong, there is we are some there is some hard workers. But when you go to a different country, you really see the hustle, the work the love, like you see all God's truths and characteristics that he speak about in the Bible. You see it in these countries because they, they do everything for each other. So we went to Jamaica. Everything was beautiful. It was nine of us, baby. We had the time of our life. 
but but baby this was the first girl's trip that was crazy it was crazy and i'm gonna show y'all a clip of that as well but basically during that the girl's trip i feel like relationships were challenged i know some were challenged for me um and i've been friends with my friends for 20 plus years and more and i have current friends that i have been friends with for probably five plus years or more but for the most part like me and my all my friends or anyone that i tend to be able to be around or hang around we solid but believe me the jamaica trip tested us in so many ways to god be the glory we still fighting and still accepting who we are now and not how, who we used to be so I say that to say that also took me down because once again, I am very, very big on friendship. I'm big on relationships, period. Like my love is to be sure with the people who love me. So that took me down on top of all the other things that I have already discussed with y'all. Then comes... Me, as I'm going through this process, I tried to take a class through summer school. It was an eight weeks course. It was math. I don't know what I was thinking, y'all. I tried my best to keep up. I tried my best to um, do what I needed to do. But your girl, it just, it just wasn't working for me. So I still made sure I took it on out. I took my test. I knew even though. I tried to encourage myself that I was going to pass. And, you know, I had my friends encourage me that I was going to pass, y'all. I still failed. So that really discouraged me. I was I haven't failed none of my classes since I've been in school. I was just like, I, I was trying to get it done because I wanted to graduate by the end of the year so I can go, go on and start working on my bachelor's. And I was slapped in the face that I failed the test. So with me failing the test, I failed the class. So that even made me more discouraged. So y'all, I was going, my brain was going through a turmoil. I literally felt like I was about to crash. So after this happened, my brother had to go back to the hospital because he thought he had an allergic reaction. But comes to find out, it was way more serious than that. My brother having to go through a whole different like, my brother's life is being transformed, like, in a blink of an eye. My brother is still young. You know, my brother has always been an amazing man, an amazing person. You know, but it's amazing that how when God is ready to transform you into who he want to transform you to, either you're going to submit to the will or you're going to be forced to the will. And that's what we have to understand, y'all, is that he has a will for us. And no matter what your will is, if it doesn't match up to his, it's not going to happen. And yeah, it's something that we don't want to understand, something that we don't want to accept, however you want to look at it. But it is what it is. If it ain't God's will, it ain't no will. It's not coming to pass. Literally. And in the case, if it does come to pass, because anything is our, everything is already temporary, you won't keep it long. So, God is taking my oldest brother through a different transition, but it's been most definitely most difficult for him. Um, because when you're stuck to being conformed in a certain way, and when God is transforming you into your new creation, nothing makes sense. You don't understand nothing. Everything seems like blah. It's like, uh, why am I going through this? Like, you don't, you don't, you're not new, you're not used to that new creation so everything is abnormal so everything makes you uncomfortable but in order to get into that new creation and to transform and to really be in abundant blessings you have to be uncomfortable so i keep continuing just to encourage him that this is his season god has a purpose for him and he needs to be able to trust the process and go through his transformation but basically this happened right before my 20th class reunion. <laughs> that was epic as well. We had the time of our life. Like, some of the things I did, y'all, at the class reunion, I'm like, mm, I shouldn't have did. Because I'm a changed woman. But at the same time, 
y'all, I be trying to get this wretchedness up out of me. But it's in you, girl. But I love some God. I love some God. And I'm allowing him to keep transforming me. I'm not going to press the issue, stress the issue. I don't care what nobody got to say about me. I, You can say whatever you want to. God love me because he the one that created me. He knew my personality. He knew my passion. He knew how spunky and confident I was going to be. So that just come with who I am. And at the end of the day, that doesn't take away from the fact that how much I love him and how he's still going to move, open up, do move mountains, open up doors that no man could close and how he going to still use me because I'm chosen. So I'm not even worrying about that, y'all. But at the end of the day, I am, I had to go into solitude for two whole months. So after my class reunion, I Decided to do my own seven day fast. And then when I did that seven day fast, I said, I, I prayed about it. And I was like, what should I fast from? And at first I didn't, couldn't, you know, didn't know. And I was like, I need something so I can really link in and get in tune. And God say, no phone, no communication, and no social media. I'm like, okay, cool. I'm all, I'm, it's easy for me to d detach from social media. Um, but from the phone, it, that's, that's a little difficult. So I did a seven-day fast from the phone and no social media. And in that pro process, in that time, he revealed so much to me. So to rewind y'all back to back to me and my fiance, we had been going through so much, y'all. I was literally ready to burn rubber, like... <laughs> Oh, y'all, I don't know how to fight for a relationship as far as a man. I am not ashamed to say that. I am so used to if it doesn't fit what I like and what I desire and what I want is by. So, y'all, when I tell y'all that's where I was at, like, by, I literally, like, was at by. But that's part of the reasons why I went into the fast because I wanted to make sure that I wasn't leaning on my own understanding and I was leaning on God's understanding. So when I went into that fast, God started revealing stuff to me about me and I'm like, hold up. I didn't come to this fast to get revealed nothing about me. I wanted to be revealed about him. I kept asking for clarity and discernment about him and then you telling me what you trying to tell me about me. But the point of what I'm trying to say is that is that I God I went into that fast thinking that I'm going in to get clarity about if this man is the man for me, but God wanted me to go into that fast to get in tune to who the God who the woman God created me to be. So y'all, I found so many things out about myself, and I'm gonna just tell y'all some of them. One of them, like I said, I don't know how to fight. I don't know how to fight for a relationship with a in a, with a man. I don't know what to fight for if it's worth fighting for. Um, one of those reasons being it wasn't that's not what was presented to me as I was growing up. Um, my mama had had all her kids by the same man. My mama also when she left when she finally left my daddy, my mama kind of really she dated, but she never had nothing serious where it was consistent where I seen I seen that if it didn't fit it didn't mix if she didn't like it if it didn't if it wasn't what she wanted it was Bob that's what I knew so that's what I'm used to um the second thing that I've learned was that I was a people pleaser I've, I said that in the beginning but it was to the point that I'm trying to please the wrong people like I wasn't getting reciprocated the same energy that I that I'm always giving to people so he showed me some of those people. He showed me though that 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 I was a people pleaser and I got it mixed up with him telling me to love my people and allowing people to take advantage of me. And this goes for a, a, a several people that takes advantage of me. Um some is intentionally, some is unintentionally, but he showed me the people, he showed me that the other thing that he showed me was that in a marriage, you become, it's two, but you become one. But 
in order for me to be the wife that I should be, need to be for my husband, I need to be the woman of God he created me to be. And that'll come naturally. So he showed me that I was too busy focusing on trying to change or adjust or for my fiance because he's so traditional or now nah, he's just not it's not even that he more so traditional he just so different and he think different that I got so tired of feeling like uncomfortable if I say this or say that that I will try to adjust things but it's it was either do you accept me or do you not and another one of my friends at the class reunion when I asked him a question about his situation that was the best thing he could have said to me in reference to when you're trying to get married to somebody. Do they accept you for who you are? And what I mean by that is, y'all, there is character and there is behaviors. Behaviors can always change, but character can't. Character is who God created you to be. That's your characteristics. And as far as behavior, you can change those. So I had to evaluate my fiance's if it was his character or it's his behavior. That's where we at now. I'm learning how to fight. I feel like I was still, although I was ready to go, I was able to agree that I will still fight only because I don't feel like I have fought enough. I don't feel like I really have put in the effort to, you know, change some of the things that I know I shouldn't do or change some of the things that I know I shouldn't say or change some of the things that, you know, matter to him that I'm like, boy, you ain't trying to, you can't change me. Like some of the things that he is requ requiring of me, it's not only him, it's God as well requiring these things for me. So it lines up to the woman of God that I'm supposed to be, period. It's just that it's not my formality. So I had to reevaluate and check myself. And so, y'all, once again, I didn't talk about solitude before, but y'all, solitude is real. You have to be able to go into solitude. You have to be able to self-evaluate yourself. You have to understand that whenever there is a situation or a disagreement, it doesn't just lie on one person. It lies on two people. So although I went into that phase trying to get clarity on him, God gave me clarity on me, on what I need to work to work as, as a woman of God, period, to be the woman of God, uh, to be the wife that I need to be for any individual. So y'all, um, it's, I'm literally in a better place. Two months ago, y'all, I was about to crash. It's like I haven't been able to catch a break. It's like, I get it. It's like, in the Bible, it, it, it nothing says it. None of this will ever be easy. But it's like, dang, why do you got to go through so many trials? Why do you got to go through so many tests? Like, why? Like, but I get it. If you got nothing to fight for, what do you got to live for? What do you have to live for if you don't have nothing to fight for? So I get it. And I get it that there is a blessing in every lesson. And if you are not paying attention and you distracted and focused on all the wrong things, you will miss the mark. You will miss the mark. So y'all, I know I ain't the only one that's a, per, a, a people a pe pleaser. I got friends that's like this. Me and some of my friends talk about how we hate that we like this. But I wonder if you want to change the heart that God has embedded inside my body, in my soul. Like, I, I'm, I, I pray to be able to meet more people who genuinely, naturally just love people. But what I do, what I don't do no more and I'm not doing is I'm not pleasing nobody. I'm not here to please you. I'm here to glorify God. I'm here to line up to the wheel. And I'm, I'm, li I'm here to live until he called me home. My presence, now my, my spirit is forever, but I'm here in presence to be able to be an image of Jesus. So 
y'all. Accept the new me. Period. This goes for everybody. Yes, it may not be. Uh, I'm not going to be one of them uh, ones who uh, fake about loving God. I'm not going to be the ones who fake about like I'm perfect. I'm not going to be the one who fake. If I'm, If that's what you're looking for, this ain't the podcast for you. I'm going to be authentic. You're going to actually see God transform through me. Like I have, I, my, my, my fleshly and my desires is, is wow. They don't go away. I have to wake up every day and make the right decisions. And that's what life is about. It's what you make of it. What decision you going to make today? What truth you going to live in? And I'm, I'm, I'm accepting all of that. So if you looking for anything other than that, that's not me. I'm sorry. I still cuss. I still twerk. I still gossip. I still I I still do everything that I'm been fighting to change from for my old creation. It's just done differently. So at the end of the day, I'm never gonna be that perfect person that everybody try to act like they they are. That's a lie. And we need to live in our truth. We need to be a, accept the things that our flesh desire. We need to be able to accept the things that we do wrong. We need to be able to accept the fact of who we are and who is our character and what is a behavior. Because once again, your character cannot be changed. Your behavior can, but your character can't because that's who God created you to be. So accept it. Embrace it. But love. Be kind. Be generous. Don't be bragging. Don't be boasting. Be humble. Be truthful to yourself. Because that's the only thing that's going to set you free. So anytime y'all I feel unbalanced, I got to re-go back and go into solitude to reevaluate myself because I know it ain't nobody but me. Probably trying to please somebody. Probably trying to be do something that I know I shouldn't be doing. Or probably trying to keep on living my old creation and my new creation. Mm-mm. I got to pick, I got to pick one, I got to pick a side. I can't be lukewarm. It is what it is. And I'm picking a new creation. And I'm praying for all the other, I'm praying for everybody else who want to pick, pick the new creation as well. Because believe me, you're going to get whiplash. You're going to get people that look up at you like, oh, you crazy. You're going to get people who look at you when you say a cussing word because you say you a Christian. Girl, bye. Girl, boo. Don't change it. Don't stop who I know I am in Christ. Everybody got their own strength. God give they, his, his different strength in certain people. So don't be don't be expecting a perfect soul from me because you're not. And don't be expecting the same. Don't be expecting no 110 energy when you're giving me 50. Energy is something that money can't buy. I just want genuine love. And I'm not afraid to remove the ones who ain't giving it to me. So y'all... I don't know if that sounds crazy, but that's what I've been going through. And to be honest, I've been trying to find a way to say it, like, you know, without trying to sh try to sugarcoat it or make it seem like it's this or, you know, make it seem like, but this is just what it is. And in order for me to be able to say one soul at a time, I got to be able to be true. And that's really who I am. But it's like I say, things, people, places will make you waver on who you are to fit in. And I ain't, I ain't got to do that. I'm the light in the room, baby. You got to know that. So, y'all, I'm going to have y'all some footage. I'm going to give y'all some pictures because I ain't, I ain't show. I, I just want to show y'all kind of the time frame of what I've been through. But just to show you that although I've been going through this and the devil been trying to divide me and make me think crazy thoughts and make me make improper decisions and all the above because y'all have been doing some stuff. Your girl has been wilding, okay? But guess what? I'm back. And I'm back and I'm better. So it's all good. And I'm here to keep on saving these souls. So y'all, I'm going to drop that footage. I'm going to drop this, this episode. And I'll be back to y'all within the next, I want to say about two weeks to maybe to a month. Only because y'all, this stuff really takes time. I'm back in school. My job is very demanding. And I, I, I'm always got something to do. So 
it takes time to present quality. And so I'll see y'all soon. But until then, let me send y'all out with a prayer. Lord, for everybody who's listening to this tonight, Lord, I just pray that you continue to bless us supernaturally. Lord, I pray that you, the blessings over their family. Lord, I pray the blessings over our nation. Lord, I pray the blessings over our souls, Heavenly Father, that we allow your will to be done on earth as it is in heaven, Heavenly Father. I pray that we allow each other to love each other genuinely, Lord, and and quit comparing each other uh, or putting expectations um, that we expect instead of making sure that we accept people for who they are heavenly father i pray that you go before us i pray that whatever door closed door whatever door you close a bigger door is open lord and we want to thank you in advance for being an awesome god and keeping us protected in this crazy crazy world in jesus mighty name we love you for life amen Thank y'all for tuning in with your girl, Black Angel, on Save One Soul at a Time podcast. I'll see y'all in a minute. Baby, it's the long green for me. Yes.
Oh yeah, that don't last, boo. With Christy, not with them, not with them designs.